Welcome to today's Cultivating Success Sustainable Small Farms webinar. We're excited to have you on the webinar today. Our topic is cash flow budgeting. Cultivating Success is a partnership of the University of Idaho, the Small Acreage Nonprofit Organization Rural Roots, and Washington State University's Food Systems Program. We want to give a special shout out and thank you to Western SARE for their financial support of the Financial Fitness for Farmers webinar mini series. Our presenter today is Kate Painter. Kate is an extension educator with University of Idaho located in Boundary County, Bonners Ferry. And this is the fourth session of a four part webinar. So she's going to be talking today about cash flow budgeting and then tomorrow or later on today we'll get that webinar posted and you can go online and look at all four in the series. A couple of webinar tips if you can close all the other programs running on your computer that's probably going to improve your experience today to have all of your internet bandwidth focused on this webinar. If you have any problems with your sound at any time, you can call in on the phone. The phone number for the webinar is located in your welcome email. If you do switch to the phone, please remember to mute your computer so you don't get feedback. At any time, you can type uh, questions that you have for Kate into the Q&A box or you can ask for help with any technical assistance issues that you, you might have. Handouts have been emailed to you this morning so that includes a copy of Kate's slide set. We will also be posting those handouts with the recorded webinar on the Cultivating Success website. So with that I'm going to go ahead and turn the webinar over to Kate. Can you hear me? Great. Yes, we can hear you and we can see your slides. You are on the opening slide rather than your first slide. So, okay. Good morning. Thank you. Okay. Here we are. Cash flow budgeting. Thank you so much for attending today. Um, cash flow sounds like something really simple that is just simple arithmetic. And in a way, it, it really is. But it's also an incredibly important tool financial management. I'm sure we've all had the experience of not realizing that all of a sudden we were out of money or we were somewhere we were not planning to be in terms of money and to be in the hole versus being in the black is a whole different ball game. So you want to avoid that. Um, so it, it is a really important management tool. So today we're going to talk about that um, how it can be used for financial decision making as well as business analysis. We will talk about the structure and the components of a cash flow budget and illustrate the procedure for completing a cash flow budget. There are many ways. And then we're going to discuss how the similarities and differences between a cash flow budget and an income statement, which we spoke about in an earlier webinar. And then finally, we're going to talk about advantages and potential uses of a cash flow budget. So uh, basically, it's a summary of your projected cash inflows and cash outflows for a business over a given period of time. So typically, you will divide your accounting period into appropriate periods. It could be months, it could be quarters, whatever you want. And we have some really nice templates for that, that um, you should have been sent one via email. So basically the purposes include estimating the ability of the business to pay financial obligations on time and estimate the amount and timing of future borrowing needs if you're going to do that and as assess your cash flow needs for longer term investments. Um, you often want to figure out whether something is feasible, if you can afford to do something or not. And these are all going to be estimates and you may need to revisit them over time. 
Okay, boy, that dog and that little girl have really changed. I, the dog is no longer with us and that little girl is 22. But I love that picture from uh, the farm, my sheep farm. So even the most profitable agribusinesses often find themselves short of cash to run the business. And cash flow budgeting will help managers anticipate cash shortfalls and plan for these shortages. Now in the example that I've been using throughout this series, I had a small sheep farm um, as a, uh, on, on my farm. I also, for the most of the time, had an outside job as did my former husband. So there were um, money from non-farm sources that were used to cover shortfalls on the farm and back and forth. Um, but it's very important to keep track of that because you don't want to be having your, your hobby business sucking money away from other sources, you know, you need to track all those. <clears throat> so you really want to know often if your project is financially feasible, can you do it from a cash flow standpoint? Um, you want to know if there's going to be sufficient capital available when it is needed, if you plan for some capital investments. Um, and you may need to borrow and you're going, you will need to figure out how much you need to borrow. <clears throat> and you want to know if the project will generate the cash that you need to repay any new loans. A lot of the times you're going to be guesstimating. So to start doing that and get all that research done that you can to get really good guesses is important. But even more important is to update that when things change. So you may want an annual cash flow. Uh, you may even want something monthly just to figure out where you're at. <clears throat> okay, so the main distinction between a cash flow budget and, uh, and other things like an income statement is that it only looks at cash. So the, it would be things like crop and livestock sales, <clears throat> machinery sales, and those are called capital asset sales. So if you're gonna get rid of something, then cash would come in. Um, new loans, that would be money coming in. Uh, personal and non-farm revenue, if you're having to borrow from other sources for your business. And you do want to track that very carefully and not get them mixed up. Of course, outflows would be things like expenses, payments on your debts, and taxes. Um, so the big distinction with a cash flow budget is we don't look at some of these non-cash items that we've talked about earlier, like depreciation, which is the value of assets that are wearing out, like trucks or machinery, for example, or changes in inventory. <clears throat> Those are important to track, but that's not what you're doing in your cash flow budget. So a cash flow bu budget, uh, the important thing is also is the timing of the flow. We, you're going to need to note when the cash will be received and paid out and uh, for what and how much, and usually on a monthly basis. <clears throat> and the nice thing about thinking about these things in advance is when we look at the example at the um, later on, we'll see well, you could have arranged to have sold that earlier and, uh, and avoided a lot of problems with not having the cash you needed when your the hay was ready that you'd already said you would purchase. So just helping you think ahead of what's going to be going on in the cycles of your business. <clears throat> so um, yeah, we're going to be estimating your cash flows for a future time period. And it's really helpful if you look backward as well. And if you're adjusting your cash flows to make them mirror reality throughout the year, at the end of the year, you should have a cash flow statement that shows what actually happened. And that will help you plan. That will be an incredibly useful tool for helping you plan your next year's cash flow budget. So yeah, very advantageous to do both. And if you're doing a good job of your current cash flow budget, you'll automatically have a cash flow statement at the end of the period. Okay, so um, this is a standard cash flow budget. If you start looking around and Googling for templates that fit what you want, 
you'll realize there's a there's a little bit of you'll have to look carefully to kind of see what they're all doing and where the formulas are because typically they're adding and subtracting the columns and uh, doing things automatically for you which is nice but you you're going to have to kind of peer closely so here we have beginning cash flow cash balance time period one and we have inflows uh, like we've already talked about farm sales capital sales miscellaneous cash income total cash inflow then we have outflows expenses capital purchases miscellaneous expenses and then we have a total cash outflow so that's the summary in line nine and then it's nice because here they say cash balance is line five minus line nine and then it'll tell us how much we need to borrow and if we've got loan repayments we put that in there and that gives us an ending cash balance and the debt outstanding so if you know you have to borrow but you don't want to borrow more than you need um, it's good to do this these days we often have a line of credit which simplifies it um, but still you want to know how much is the total you might need to borrow for the maximum uh, line of credit you need to apply for and it you know it's not good form to have to constantly go back and have that re-upped it um, you need to be a good manager and have a better idea hopefully of what you'll need so steps for constructing a cash flow budget um, it would be really great if you could do all these steps you may not be able to and but it's still important to do a cash flow budget even if you don't have everything planned out but you will need to have uh, some sort of a whole farm plan so that you can estimate your cash needs uh, maybe your farm isn't a large crop and livestock production farm maybe it's much much smaller but you'll still need to estimate your cash needs estimate your cash receipts estimate your sales <clears throat> from your crops any other cash income, your cash operating expenses. And if you're putting these in here, estimate your personal and non-farm cash expenses, any purchases and sales of capital assets. And uh, very importantly, find and record all scheduled principal and interest payments. And uh, that should get you a pretty good cash flow budget. <clears throat> Okay, so uses for a cash flow budget. Well, you're obviously, like we've discussed, you will project the timing and, the, and amount of new borrowing that you will need during the year and the timing and the amount of loan repayments. You know, you're, if you've got a good relationship with your banker, they're going to want you to be successful. And if you have planned in advance and, and uh, ask in advance to reschedule a loan repayment to coincide or when you're going to have revenue, for example, it will look more like good management rather than a, a, a plea to delay a payment because you haven't um, thought through everything or things aren't going as planned. So uh, definitely it will help with the borrowing and debt repayment plan to prevent excessive borrowing and save on interest expense. Um, but very importantly, I think uh, it is a, a way to look at perhaps rearranging purchases, maybe foregoing some purchases, and scheduling your debt repayments to coincide so when you have the money to pay for them. For example, maybe you have some capital expenditures that it doesn't that you could delay or that it wouldn't matter so much if you did it next month rather than this month. Um, and, but you maybe you have some other things that aren't so flexible. Insurance premiums are usually not flexible, um, but maybe when you're setting them up, you could think about when is a better time. Um, so you can combine your business and personal finances. You may need to, maybe you borrow from personal, which I used to do with my small farm, but you want to track that so that you can then repay. Uh, it was kind of my borrowing scheme but if it's constantly bleeding your um, non-farm income, you better um, become aware of that. Maybe that's not really what you want to be doing. 
So um, really, it's going to help your lender. And if you've got this kind of information, again, it looks, it shows good management and good planning and having done your research. And it will help them maybe help you spot weaknesses and offer better financial advice. They may have some tools or flexibility that, that you don't know about. And if you can show them, um, you know, this is an area where I'm, I'm having problems or I have shortfalls here, um, they, may, they may have some ways to help you. So yeah, if you can plan ahead, you may find that you're gonna get cash discounts for paying right when you buy something. You're gonna be making your payments properly, not getting any late fees. Um, it will really help with tax planning. And on a farm, you have the flexibility for tax planning that non-farm businesses do not. So if you time your purchases and your sales and your capital expenditures um, so that they fall into a different year, tax year, uh, you can subtract them from taxable income. Uh, I didn't explain that very well, but Farmers do this all the time. If they realize they've had a really good year, then they know that this is the year to, pre to buy before January 1st fertilizer they're going to need, seed, feed, whatever, because they can subtract those expenses from that year and reduce their taxable income. And on the other hand, you, um, you, can, you can move things around from one year to the next for tax purposes. And that's just kind of a break that the IRS gives farmers. If you have an, a tax accountant uh, or you have somebody you can consult with, it's usually a really good use of your money unless you like to do that kind of research yourself. But um, tax planning is a very, very important use of your cash flow budget. So another thing that will help you, and this would be something that your, your, your banker could help you with too, is if you have a, an imbalance between your current and non-current current debt. In other words, um, maybe you're trying to pay something down too quickly to save interest, but it's causing problems with the operation of your business. They may suggest, well, you know, you could put that on a five-year or a seven-year loan rather than a three-year. That's what that statement means, too much current debt relative to non-current debt. If it's interfering with the operation of your business, then maybe that's something to consider. It may feel like it's costing you more interest money, but again, that may be fine from a tax planning standpoint. Um, there's so much profit management that is impacted by tax laws. So um, very worth your time to look into how you structure things and how that impacts your taxable income. Okay, monitoring actually actual cash flows. Um, this is a course is always good advice, but hard to do when you're super busy. Um, you want to be monitoring and controlling your cash flow throughout the year. In some ways today, we have a lot better tools than we did in the past. We can go online and look at our bank account all the time. But um, if you don't have time to do that, Again, you need to at least have some sort of a structure where you're looking at your, and monitoring your cash flows. Um, that way you may catch something before it gets out of control. You realize, uh, actually it was funny, I was populating this, this exercise that we're going to talk about later where I had um, tried to make a, I had an income statement and then a statement of cash flows from my sheep farm and I was taking that and putting it into an actual cash flow month by month. And what I realized was I had severely underestimated my expenses. I think I had, you know, I was just like, this will be a good exercise. I ran that farm for so long. I have a pretty good idea of what I spent. I should have gone back and look at my tax records because I had severely underestimated my expenses when I thought about it on a monthly basis. It's like, I spent a lot more than that on dog food every month. Um, so anyway, you think you know something, you've done it a long time, but when you go down and you start diving into the details, you may find that um, you were wrong. So I, I definitely found that I was wrong when I was trying to make this example for the class. 
And uh, definitely if I was going to make a better example, I would, it would look quite a bit different. We often underestimate our expenses, at least I do. Um, and it's easy to overestimate your revenue. And those are two such common mistakes. You're passionate about your business. You're optimistic, otherwise you wouldn't be doing it. But um, try to be conservative. Try to err on the side of underestimating your revenues and overestimating your expenses. That way you can be pleasantly surprised rather than in, in trouble. And doing that, monitoring your actual cash flows will really, really help you figure out what you should be doing when and, and help you maybe not make those purchases that you shouldn't be making. Um, you'll just be a lot happier and definitely more successful if you're, if you're carefully watching your business throughout the year. So, and as we talked about it, you can look back and kind of fine tune these as you go on. And then next year, you'll have a much better idea of what you should be putting in there. So here is a form for monitoring cash flows. And basically, I, it, it has your, your annual total of what you're going to put in there, your budget to date, and your actual to date. So you can see if you're ahead of schedule or behind as you go along. So you might even break this out on a month to month basis and then have a, another sheet where you've got your annual totals. Okay, I, I did a, in the previous, uh, two years ago, we did a two year, a two hour class for each of these and we're at 1120. So I'm going to talk a little bit about a greenhouse example. There may be some of you on, on, the, on the webinar today who are interested in this. Um, so this would be a really good idea to look through um, whether or not you can afford a greenhouse. You know that you will have a lot more to sell, but you'll have a lot more expenses. And the only way to truly try to tease this out is to start doing some research and put some numbers down. So if you're going to borrow some money for a greenhouse, you're going to want to look at your principal and interest payments and uh, as well as everything else. What you want, we're trying to find out in this exercise is will the investment generate enough additional cash income to meet the additional cash requirements. So um, basically that is looking at whether or not it's financially feasible. It, financially feasible is really just looking at does it cash flow? So if we borrow some money, we're going to be paying some back. We've got to add interest on top of that but we're gonna have a lot more to sell. We're gonna have more to sell earlier on and later on. How is that going to work? Will it be feasible? Um, when they talk about economic feasibility or profitability, it's whether at the, you know, at the bottom line, the very end of it, will it have been a profitable decision? But when we're looking at financial feasibility, it, it's looking at whether you can cash flow this investment. So uh, we're going to just go through this example and look at the cash inflows and the cash outflows. All right, so one of the main things about cash measuring and monitoring cash flows is you wanna be able to meet your debt obligations in a timely manner without disrupting the operation of your business, without having to scramble and borrow from others. Um, it's just, a lot less stressful if you if you've got it uh, got a handle on what what's coming down the pike although you can't plan for everything but this is an attempt to do your best so this is a, a, a actual analysis for a greenhouse investment it has a 15 year life and um, it is going to have thirty thousand dollars worth at the end of that 15 years Okay, so um, this, it actually, I think the cost of the system itself is $90,000, not the irrigation system. The cash down payment is $30,000. So the capital borrowed is $60,000, and it's being borrowed for three years at 7%. It may well be the case that that's too optimistic, that that loan should be a longer period of time. And the additional crop income is estimated to be $24,480. Um, 
but there's going to be additional crop expense of $7,440 and additional irrigation expense of $5,400. So here is a cash flow analysis. There's going to be uh, additional crop income of $24,480 in each year. The cash outflows will be additional crop expenses of $7,440 each year, irrigation expense of $5,400 each year, and we're adding that three years of principal payments of $20,000 for the first three years, and then interest payments, which go down as the value, the amount owing goes down each year. Summarizing those total cash outflows, you'll see that the net cash flow is negative for the first three years. By year four, it is positive. So what do you think there? If you feel like, well, I've got enough money to cover that um, from other sources, I wanna do it, I'll get the pain over quickly, um, that would be an option. On the other hand, if you do not, and you don't want to cause such stress for the first three years, you can see that um, you could do something longer and that, that may be uh, something you can do. So as I already stated, always watch for the impact on income taxes. Uh, a lot of people have small farms as well as off-farm jobs, and it may be that they use a loss generated by their farm to offset taxable income from their off-farm job. So um, these are things that are really worth looking at uh, with a, um, a tax planner or just an accountant. We often will have cash flow shortages when we buy something like land or constructing new buildings and facilities, getting breeding stock, major equipment purchases. And um, it's interesting, sometimes when you analyze the sustainability of a business or a farm, it may occur to you that those managers are so risk averse that they are not doing things that would be, that would help them expand and become more profitable. Maybe bring on another partner, bring back uh, somebody else who wants to farm with them. Um, and if so, you have to, you know, try to be flexible enough to think about, well, it's okay. If I want to grow, I'm going to have to, um, go into debt, but you do need to plan. And it may well be that somebody in your operation is much more conservative and doesn't want to do something and somebody else is the opposite. So this kind of analysis will help you work with others and plan out how you could grow or change your operation. Okay, so um, just I'm going to conclude this section of kind of the lecture before we look at some um, examples. And also I wanna have time for question and answers. So a cash flow budget is a summary of your estimated cash inflows and outflows for a given time period by sub accounting periods like a month. And you can include both farm and personal cash needs in a cash flow budget. Non-cash entries are not included. That is the main difference between a cash flow budget and or statement and an income statement. So a cash flow budget will help you estimate your borrowing needs, your debt repayment capacity, and the timing of both. And it will also help you do a financial feasibility analysis of a proposed investment project. So, um, a statement of cash flows is a little bit different than a cash flow budget. It is looking back and seeing where, whether or not your business generated cash over the year by looking at your inflows and your outflows. This is one from 2016 and uh, it starts with my beginning cash balance, all my inflows from the farm, um, total inflows is 11,480. And then the outflows were what I spent in 2016. So some feed, dog food, fertilizers, all these things, shearing, um, no labor, I didn't pay myself. But cash outflows were 7,550. The net cash from operations is 3,930. 
but there are some other cash items that go into your cash flow statement. So um, capital purchases, in this case, a $1,200 trained border collie, worth every penny of that, believe me. And uh, so then you subtract that and, um, well, let's see, we're gonna subtract that at the bottom. The net cash from investing is uh, minus $1,200. And then uh, cash flow from financing, a mortgage payment, machinery loan payments, those are all negative. In this case, I had off-farm wages of $18,526. So I'm, uh, and this is not uncommon to mix off-farm and farm type cash flows. It, it may be just the way that you've decided to operate your business. And in my case, that was how I was doing it. And uh, living expenses, I used about 10,000 of that. Um, so that was a minus $10,000 but about 18,526 went into the farm. Net cash flow from financing is minus $1,530. And I'm totally fine with this because I'm making my mortgage payment on my uh, farm, which also is my house. So you see things are, are kind of a mixture in farm and non-farm, not unheard of in many small farms. Um, and so the net change in cash is minus $1,000. At the beginning, we had our, started with our cash on hand. So the net change in cash is minus 1,000 and my ending cash balance is $1,200. Let's just go back up. Beginning cash balance was 2,200. I sold quite a few things, $11,480. Um, I bought a lot and that was um, outflows of 7,550. I bought a border collie. I made mortgage payments throughout the year. I paid some machinery loan payments. I had some off farm wages and I took out a living and a, or a draw. I spent about $10,000 for living and net cash flow from financing this $1,530 net change in cash. So if you track this, you will see how much you're putting in from your own off farm wages. Um, and, and just kind of at least separate the two so you have an idea of how you're doing. I mean, you may well have to invest in your farm. That may be really compelling and that's what you want to do, but it is, it is really nice to have a handle on, on how much you're doing and how it's turning out. Okay, so a cash flow budget is going to look more like this. I do have an Excel version that you were sent a copy of that we'll look at in a minute. But um, basically it's month by month, your cash inflows. And, and this is from a planning perspective. So when am I gonna sell my lambs? When are the fleece sales gonna come in? When am I gonna sell my coal ewes? They don't have to be sold in June. I'll know by May that they're not lambing or maybe I might as well wait and let them gain some more weight. I have lots of grass. Um, guard dog puppies, when do I plan to have a litter? When, when will that money come in? Um, I should have a pretty good idea of when I need to buy things. When I went through and did this, I realized I had definitely underestimated my dog food expenses. We had three um, guardian dogs and two border collies and I spent more than $50 a month on dog food, especially in the winter. Veterinary expense, $200, that was probably low. Um, so just trying to guesstimate, and then when you go back and you actually look at your expenses, it may be eye-opening. Okay, so the cash flow budget, I'm just showing you pieces of the spreadsheet because it may well be hard to see the numbers on the screen. It has the section for cash inflows on the top and the period of time, and it, it does the addition in math for you and just allows you to play around without having to do the math. Um, and then at the bottom of each month, it's got your net cash flow and you can put your cash balance to starting 2200 and you can see it takes the net cash flow, which is the inflows minus the outflows and it adds the cash balance of 2200 and gets your cumulative net cash flow, which then um, is the starting point for the next month. And, and you can see that 
it's a negative cash flow for February, March, April, and May. And um, so you're either going to have to be investing with off farm income or switch things around or something. But just to be aware that it's, it's, it's adding up as time goes on is really important. So um, I'm just going to summarize this and then we'll look at the Excel. So your cash flow statement is created from past transactions and you, you've got a statement of cash flows, just a two page or maybe it's a, it's a one page PDF from 2016 in your handouts. Um, and you can, I use my income statement to inform my cash flow statement. But I really think that when I was doing an income statement kind of off the top of my head, it wasn't very accurate because when I did my cash flow statement and separated it out month by month, um, it seemed like I had underestimated some expenses. So uh, it's really important if you can help you know, and to do a monthly cash flow budget to really look at your flows in and out over the year. Um, there are many, many resources that will help you do this. Like I said at the beginning, it is a simple task, but super important from a management perspective. So at, at this point, before we've um, totally forgotten what we're doing, let's just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop this share and go to my Excel file. Okay, so I know this is small, and um, basically it's what we saw on this on the spreadsheet. Um, I mean, on the slides, and it's simply doing the math for you. But you can see that there are places to switch things around that would really help this business. And it's fine, it's fine from a whole year basis but there are going to be short shortfalls that are quite large. In July, it's $1,200 in the red. Well, why is that? Is that because that's when you have to buy your hay? Yes, it is. $1,000 for hay in July and $500 in August. Well, you know, it looks like you better plan ahead and, and have more money in the bank. Otherwise, it's going to be an unpleasant surprise and you cannot buy hay out of the field and take it without um, paying for it right then and there. So there may be some other things that could be switched around, some savings that could be made, or just realize that um, you're going to have to change something to do with your business, how much you're subsidizing it. Um, maybe you can figure out some way to not have to buy quite so much hay by changing your grazing patterns. Anyway, that's why it's so important to do a cash flow. All right, um, at this point, are there any questions? So Kate, with a cash flow budget, would you include a lease payment or a mortgage payment in that cash flow budget? Yes, yeah, you definitely want to have your, your payments and that is why it's so important. Um, you don't want it sneaking up on you because you're just, you're gonna get a late fee or, um, anyway, you can generate huge problems for yourself by not thinking ahead. And it's so, so hard, especially if you're, you're doing what I was doing then, which is raising a family, having a farm, having an off-farm job and an on-farm job and trying to build all of this up. Um, and I would feel terrible that I wouldn't know where I was at times. And that's why I feel really strongly about this. You, you don't wanna have to, take money out on a credit card or something like that. Um, I mean, sometimes emergencies come up. I remember when our border collie got hit on the road and we were very happy that the vet school would take a credit card for payment, but you don't want to operate your business that way on a regular basis. And, and then, and for instance, with the border collie and the vet bill, then would you go back and adjust your cash flow to include in there the cost of maybe a payment on that credit card? How, like how often do you adjust your cash flow statement? You know, that's a great question. Um, 
and it will probably depend on how much outside resources you're willing to help your business float. But most of the time we do want our businesses to pay for themselves sooner rather than later. So if you, if you, for example, had to um, have a, a vet bill, you may want to just reduce your income, your, your interest payments requirements by saying, I am going to pay a hundred dollars a month until this is paid off. It will take me a year, but um, I've got to include that. But, you know, doing this kind of thing and changing things because of emergencies. I mean, I just keep thinking of we're all in this pandemic right now, and it's really going to change how regular businesses work, what their inflows are going to be. And um, so you need to start thinking about that sooner rather than later. And and figuring out what you're going to do. I mean, I definitely didn't need to buy a $1,200 trained border collie. And if I hadn't done that yet, and I looked at this budget, I could say, you know, I don't need that. Wouldn't that be nice to have somebody else train a border collie that's just so responsive? I don't need that. I've operated without that before. Maybe in the year where I've got a lot of profit, a lot of extra cash, I'll do that. And Another another question is when you're looking at the cash flow, you might want to put in your income from an off-farm job. How does that relate to separating your personal finances and your business finances? Oh, that's a really good question. I mean, we we often do that, and it's important that we we keep track of that. I mean, especially if you're like an LLC, you want to have a separate bank account for that LLC where the only thing that goes in and out of there is things related to the business. If you're taking a draw, you need to make it, or bringing money in from something out else, you need to make it really formal. Otherwise, um, you might lose the protection that an LLC gives you in terms of liability. So um, that's a liability issue as well as a financial one. But, um, you know, we, we often, with farms, we add our off-farm wages to our farm to make everything work. The fact that we have a farm and live on a farm often makes our living expenses less than if we had an off, a, a home that was not on the farm. So there's a lot of mixing and connecting that happens. And um, if you go in, to get a loan, it may be the only reason you can get a loan is you've, you've showed that every month we have a monthly income from an off-farm job. So um, especially, it's especially nice with like a Quicken or some other accounting software where you can have things coded and you can easily see how they are summarized um, and get reports. So I suggest that you might wanna look into things like that but if you've got it um, carefully outlined in your in your budget that this is this is off farm income and and it's mixed just kind of the way we had it in the slides here it is it is not uncommon it's not really frowned upon on small farms because it is there is so much mixing Okay, thank you. Um, one final question is looking at the overall financial fitness for farming series. If someone is starting with this cash flow webinar, how do you suggest they go back and access the other series and kind of make sense of the four key financial statements that you've discussed in this series? Oh, that's a really good question. You know, I think you could almost start with cash flow because it's going to maybe answer some really important questions about financial feasibility for your farm. Um, the, the way I do budgets and the way that really you could start with any enterprise is just like I'll interview a farmer and we'll start with his story. Okay, what do you do first? So, um, let's say I'm interviewing a wheat farmer, start from you finished, you're done with last season. What do you do first? Well, I'll go out and disc in the fall and maybe I'll spray for Roundup. So you write that story in October disc with what? 
um, write down what you do that's related to the business. I mean, you may not need to do this because you know what you're doing, but what it does is it'll start making this list of everything that costs um, throughout what you're doing. Okay, I'm gonna buy chicks here, I'm gonna buy feet, oh, I've gotta buy the house. You know, you're, you're gonna write down what you need. From that, you'll know when you need the cash. So that'll help you figure out as you're, and maybe you have a story in your mind, but you could write it out on a piece of paper. What would I do when? When would I, when would I be ready to sell those? When would I need to market it? So you have a timeline that is, and I actually write mine now and I call it a calendar. And then I use that to start populating a budget. You can start populating a cash flow. And um, maybe the financial statements would be the last thing you would be doing because those you really have to have some performance to be measuring. So that makes a lot of that makes a lot of sense. And if people have pretty good records for the past, they can go back and create perhaps financial statements that represent last year. Is that correct? Yeah, if you, you should be able to, if you've been doing it for a while and you've got good records, you should be able to at least make a stab. And, you know, don't get overwhelmed. Just, just do the part that you know and, um, and work from there. Make them better as time goes on. I think that often the fact that you don't know every word, what it means, the vocabulary, how to do something, I think don't let that stop you. Just start doing the part that you know. Maybe you're just going to have um, cash inflows and cash outflows. That's great. Hey, if you can separate them on a monthly basis and start doing some of these templates, um, you may find it really useful. Um, and we're just so lucky to have all these templates, all these different tools. One thing that I, I learned about um, when I went to Annie's project, which is a, a, a farm management course that we'll probably be teaching next fall this way, is uh, I learned about doing Quicken for farmers rather than QuickBooks, Quicken. And it has a lot of useful tools that would help you track some of these things that we're talking about today, like where is my off-farm income, where is my payments, these kind of things. So um, look for some more interesting titles and um, things to explore in this area coming. Great. Thank you, Kate. And that does remind me that we do have a recorded webinar on the differences between Quicken and Quid books for farmers in the Cultivating Success website. Okay, well, we don't have any more questions, Kate. Thank you so much for your presentation and for answering all of those questions and for putting this four-part series together. It I'm was going to pleasure. Thank you so much for hosting it. Great. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and just remind everyone that you can go to the Cultivating Success website and here's where you can find the recorded webinars. It's the light blue link and that's where you'll find the Quicken versus QuickBooks webinar that I mentioned. I also want to and to point out that we do have this button that's going to take you right to Cal's publications. And from there, you'll be able to find all of the different publications that the University of Idaho has. Many of them are free and you can download them right onto your computer. So those are some good resources for you. And then under the resources tab, we have some national resources and clearing houses for small farming and ranching. We are going to have April and May webinars that we are going to be posting soon. We're going to be looking at topics based on what you have said that you would like in your post webinar evaluations that you've done. And then also we have a current survey that you can find on our Facebook page, our Cultivating Success Facebook page and I will send out a link to you in email. And we're trying to find out what are some of of your immediate needs and how you're being affected by the coronavirus. So 
perhaps yourself as a farmer or others in your community are being affected. And we're meeting tomorrow actually to talk as extension how we can put programming together to meet your needs. So we'll be getting that information out to you, but if you have a moment and can take our survey today, that will be extremely helpful. When I close the webinar in your browser, you'll automatically have launched this survey regarding today's webinar on cash flow budgeting. We'd appreciate your taking some time to complete that survey. There you'll also have an opportunity to tell us what other options you would like us to cover. If you haven't already signed up for our bi-monthly newsletter, please do that. You can do that on our website at cultivatingsuccess.org. In addition to sending our bi-monthly newsletter with the coronavirus, we are also sending out some high priority programs or resources as they become available. So it's a great way to stay in touch. At any time, you can email Kate and ask questions about the financial statements or email myself, Colette De Phelps, and at info at cultivatingsuccess.org. With that, thank you very much for joining us today and have a great rest of your afternoon.